Everybody have a good weekend. Yeah. Um, better today? No? Okay, guys, good morning. Let's good morning. get started. Uh, any questions about lab this week? Doing solubility lab, solubility of organic compounds. Any questions? Uh, if anybody did not get a handout during lab, please pick one up after class. Um, green sheet. Uh, any other questions before we get going? Functional groups, how are we doing? Uh, recommended to use flashcards to learn material, okay? Particularly with functional groups. You can put a functional group on one side, put the name on the back, okay? Test yourself, you can put other information there. Uh, variety of ways to use flash uh, flashcards. Anybody need some index cards? Okay. Uh, functional groups are your building blocks, okay? We put together structures pretty systematically. Down there it says C7H6O2. Anybody got a structure for that? C7H6O2. A little bit bigger, yeah? Uh, just one or two carbons. How many DUS in C7H6O2? Ignore oxygen, C7 max would be uh, 16. It's only got six, so it's missing five, ten. Five, five, five. five DUS? Got seven carbons, five DUS, huh? No, well, what if I just put up a benzene ring? There you go. Right there is four DUS, and that's six carbons. And a number of H's. Uh, I got two oxygens. I give you a big old hint. What type of functional groups maybe have one or two oxygens? Well, ketone's got one. Alcohol. Carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids. Let's kind of just hang on to carboxylic acid. Uh, there's two oxygens. Uh, now I got how many DUS on the board? Five. Uh, I think that's it. Is he seven? Six, seven. Okay, yeah, yeah. H. One, two, three, four, five. Six, O2, is that the formula? Yeah. Okay, you see, we didn't have to go through and put every single carbon. We just know some functional groups, DUSs, and, and okay, building blocks. And carboxylic acid bond to a benzene ring. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, I mean, there's enough, uh, probably a variety of other structures, probably tons of structures you can put up there that fit that formula. You could put, a, you put maybe, uh, you could put a benzene ring in two ketones because that would be six DUS. The formula only has five DUS. But there's a variety you could do. Maybe you do a ketone and an alcohol. Okay? And see, I just removed an H and put this up here. Uh, but everything has got standard bonding. And if you want a complete Lewis structure, clone pairs, right? <coughs> okay? Usually those aren't put okay, on a quiz when it says complete Lewis structure. Okay, let's move down to hybridization. Start with methane, CH4. We can draw out a structure like this. The problem is it doesn't show correct bond angles. Okay, 
This looks like a 90 degree bond angle from uh, ninth grade geometry. Okay, that's incorrect. This is an example of SP3. Uh, anytime carbon or any of these guys over here bond, they're actually going to be bonding in hybridized state, not in the ground state. Okay, ground state of carbon, we've already shown it. I'll refer to it multiple times a day. I'm only going to draw it once. Uh, valence shell, 2S and then 2P. Boom, boom, boom. Ground state, right? Boom, 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 boom. Ground state valence electrons of carbon. We need to make, uh, we need four electrons to fill. One, two, three, four. Then we would have an octet. Problem is, look at these available orbitals. I mean, we can bring one electron in, team it up, and maybe make a bond. One electron in, team it up, make a bond. What do we put here? We put two electrons here, it's going to be a lone pair. There's no lone pair in methane. We know that. We also know that every bond of methane is identical. How do you get identical bonds? How do you get four identical bonds using two different types of orbitals? It ain't going to work. Uh, certainly not mathematically. Um, that's because this exists in a hybridized state. And hybridizes, we're going to mix these. That's just a fancy word for mixed state. Uh, let's mix them up. Let's see if we can get method on the board here. We're going to reorganize these and we're going to come up with uh, four identical orbitals and we're going to call them uh, sp3 orbitals. Okay, essentially what we're doing is, let's make it simple. Let's take these four orbitals and let's put them in a blender and blend them up and then let's scoop out four identical orbitals. And that's what we've done. They're now all identical. They've been all just mixed. That's really, a, all this is highly based on math. Combination, identical orbitals, whatnot. Uh, since they've been mixed, they're no longer an S or a P. They have a new name. What do we call these four? SP3. It's simplistic. That's just the name of what went into the blender. We put one S in the blender, and we put three P's in the blender. That three is probably doesn't need to be super screwed. We we'll just call them what, uh, what went in the blender. As we go along, we'll say more about this. Because I can't just tell you everything right here. It doesn't fit uh, no context. Okay? We'll build our discussion. So we, we get this hybridized state. Also, the energy. Energy is important. This is energy, right? When you do a ground state configuration, orbitals have different energies and as you climb. Look here. The energy of these sit in between here. That's because we combine one of these and three of these. Now, are those orbitals closer to the P's or closer to the S's? They're closer to the P's because three P's went into the blender. If you put three scoops of chocolate and one scoop of vanilla in the blender, is your blend going to be more like chocolate or vanilla? It'll be more like chocolate because you put three scoops of chocolate. Okay? They sit closer to the P's in energy. Now, I didn't, this maybe look like it's right in between, okay, because it wasn't overly precise in my drawing. So in energy, they're closer to P's. What about shape? Does it look more like an S or a P? Does it look more like a P? Those three P's went in, only one S went in. Now, it's hard to draw the actual shape, but you should know that it looks a little bit more like P. As we go forward, we'll have different types of orbitals, and we can say, well, compare, comparatively, how does it look? What's the difference? Um, we can actually just go ahead and maybe try to draw what's going on here. Now, I'm not going to mix an S and three P's. That's very cumbersome in trying to draw it. I'm just going to draw maybe where we mix an S and one P. 
Uh, for example, the S is spherical, yeah? And if we sort of put the P on top of it and combine them, maybe something like this. So there's an S and there's a P. Now the S has a single phase all the way throughout it, let's call it plus. The P has a phase that's like this, plus and minus. Now on this side, the, the plus, the two phases sort of reinforce each other. It's like waves. And they build and create a bigger wave. But on this side, the plus and the minus sort of cancel each other out. You can cancel waves out. What, what might this look like? Well, on the right, it's sort of uh, increased. So maybe it looks a little bit like, like this. Well, on this side, it canceled out. There's still a little bit left, and it maybe it looks like that. This, be, this ends up being an uh, SP hybrid. So it just makes an S and a P. It's way more complicated when you, when you try to mix three P's on top. I'm not going to do that. Again, that's a lot of mathematical combination. Okay. Um, so this would be an SP orbital. This is the back load. Uh, that's there and usually it's never shown. Because when you start trying to draw these around an atom, getting that back loop in there, it's just cumbersome, not enough room to draw it, etc. Uh, during test three though, we'll talk about, we'll mention the back loop. That's where our reaction sort of comes in. Uh, when we do backside attack. Okay. Um, okay, we mix these up. We have four identical orbitals. The electrons, the four valence electrons actually sit like this. And now we're ready to make four identical bonds. Doesn't it look like we can now make four identical bonds using these hybrids? Now we can bring in an H and its electron, an H and its electron, H and electron, H electron, and we can have all the way around. Um, each orbital contains two electrons, and, and they're interacting here. Let's draw this a little bit differently. Okay, we got four hybrids. Hybrids set your geometry. Uh, your hybrids are electron regions. They set your geometry. What's the best way to spread out four electron regions? No, did hybridization in gen chem? Yeah, the best way to spread them out? Tetrahedral. What type of bond angles will that be? 109.5. See, so this looks like 90 degrees. Okay. It ain't 90 degrees. It's 109.5, and it's actually 3D. Okay. Where this is just kind of flat on the board. This is not correct. Although somebody may simply just throw this up there like that. We may have did that last week. Uh, tetrahedral. Here's a tetrahedral. Okay. It's not flat on the board. We cannot put this flat on the board if something's coming out. Okay? I can make maybe this and this if this is the board, then I got one forward and one back. Okay? Tetrahedral. Two in the plane. Consider the board flat right here. These are in the plane of the board. Boom, boom. That's coming out. This is going back. Okay? Tetrahedral. Two in the plane, one forward, one back. Uh, let's try to draw this. Uh, how about this? Two in the plane. Uh, let's see if I can get it up there in one go. Um, forward, we use sort of a bolded. And it gets bigger as it comes away. Okay, This is coming towards you. And as it comes towards you, it's getting bigger. That's what that's supposed to see. Okay, here we go. This is the one I just drew that's coming towards you. Now we got one going back. Now going back, we use a dashed, and it starts big and it tails away. And I could do that better. Really, this, I might want to lift this up a little bit. This one here. These are really almost eclipsing. I'm going to do it again real quick. Don't, don't try to draw it. Maybe... 
Uh, it's tough to get it exactly right, okay? Look at it. That's what we're trying to illustrate here. Okay? Tetrahedral. Well, the, well, your hybrids are here. They set your geometry. And this is really orbitals coming off, okay? If we draw these as orbitals, um, Okay, those are your four hybrids that are around that atom in a tetrahedral nature. Now, you, this has got a back look, right? They all have back looks, but I'm not going to draw it. It's going to get too cumbersome. So this is an sp3, 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 sp3. Four hybrids around the carbon. What are they interacting with? They're making a bond to hydrogen. What orbital does it use? 1H, 1S, I mean. No, it's got it, right? What's a shape of a 1S orbit? Spherical. So you got over here, it's this is an H, and that's a 1S, okay? Basically, you do it once and everything else is the same, so you don't want to write it all, okay? Now, let's put it right here. What do we have here? We got an S, SP3 overlapping. We got that times four, right? In a tetrahedral manner. The 1H, I mean, the 1S had an electron, and the SP3 has an electron. We can maybe show those here. They're interacting to make a two electron covalent bond through, if, through overlap of a S and SP3 orbital. And that's pretty much as far as we're going to take it. And if you want to take it further, remember that big book. Okay. A lot going on there. You can take it to an electron orbital description. We're just going to keep it as a valence, valence uh, orbitals interacting. Simple as that. Okay? times four, right? All the way around in a tetrahedral manner. Bond angles. What's this bond angle here? The two in the plane. Yeah, 109.5. Okay, it's tetrahedral. 109.5. Okay, not 90 degrees. 90 degrees, that would be coming straight across. But 109.5 gives the electrons more room. Uh, now, I, you can deviate from 109.5, but I'm never going to discuss that. Okay? Uh, standard tetrahedral. Uh, what else can we say here? Uh, okay, yeah. Two different ways for orbitals to overlap. How are these overlapping? The answer is head to head. Okay? Uh, and this is a sigma bond. <coughs> head to head overlap. Uh, for example, we can bond these two together head to head. Boom. Okay? It's like bonding my fists together head to head. Alternative, next, uh, when we get to pi bond, it's going to be maybe side to side. Okay? Think of a baseball bat. Head to head, where you take the two baseball bats, and boom, the, 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 end, the business ends head to head, boom, and they are, okay? Now, if you put the baseball bat side to side, that would not be head to head. Single bond is head to head, okay? And so we can bond these, consider that these are the same, but they can hook together. Okay. Boom, head to head overlap. Uh, one major thing about head to head overlap is they can rotate and still stay bonded. Okay, see how that's rotating? Turn it. No, don't break the bond. Okay. Turn it, yeah. 
the head can turn. You get the pie bond, it cannot turn. Pie bond is side to side, full side to side. And if you rotate, try to spin one, boom, you're breaking the bond because it's no longer full side to side. Head to head can rotate. Uh, there's probably other things to say here. Let's move to SP2 and see if we missed anything. Okay, standard tetrahedral setup. This is how carbon bonds in hybridized states. SP3, SP2, SP. Hybrid set to geometry. Importantly here, is there anything left over here? Any orbitals left over? No, we combined them all. We started with four, we get four. No, let me rethink it. You put four in the blender, you're going to pull four out of the blender. What if we put seven in the blender? How many are we going to pull out? Pull out seven. to rotate. Ethylene, C2H4. C2H4. Looks like it's got a degree of uh, unsaturation. Uh, I'm going to illustrate SP2. Okay. Uh, ground state. I should just leave it up there. structure here, and this is ethylene, that's a slang name, more, more common or systematic ethene. Uh, we're going to get alkene, where the carbons are double bonded to each other. And this is going to be sp2. They're both sp2. What we say for one carbon is going to be the exact same for the other carbon. Let's approach it this way. How many electrons are regions around this carbon? Sigma bond, sigma bond, double bond. It's three electron regions. Okay. A double bond is considered one region. A double bond is this way, but that's one region. Okay. Three regions. Go back to methane. How many electron regions around methane carbon? Four. Four. Okay. Four regions is tetrahedral. Because how are four things spread out the best? Tetrahedral. If I bring four balloons in here and tie them all at the knot, tie all four together at the location, guess how they will spread out? Yeah. Spread out in a tetrahedral manner. How does three regions spread out? Trigonal planar. Okay. Hybrid set your geometry. If you need three regions, you need three hybrids. To get three hybrids, we're going to combine just three. Because if we combine four, we get four hybrids. We only need three. Okay. Then we're going to get three, and they're going to be one, two, three. Three, SP2. Hybrid orbitals. They're called sp2 because that's what went in to uh, make them. There's three of them, three identical ones. What's left over? Did we combine everything? No, we have a p left over that did not go in the blender. It's still there. Mix three, we got three hybrids. We didn't mix this one, it's still there. Okay, 
Now the valence electrons actually sit right there. You may say, well, why didn't we pair this one up before we started going higher? Well, that's not the way it is. Okay, we're looking at just one carbon. It's making two signal bonds to hydrogen. Okay, since we've got different atoms, I, I'm not just going to say X, I'm going to say H. That means it, it had brought in one electron, bonded with the carbon electron, we made a bond. Another H brought in an electron, bonded to the carbon. But now the carbon is also bonded to another carbon. Now if we draw this carbon, I'm going to draw it fresh, okay? Here it is. It's got three hybrids around it. The hybrids are spread out. Trigonal planar, right? Okay, let's see if we can do that. Trigonal planar. It's planar. You can draw it flat on the board. Like a piece of paper, it's planar. Boom, flat on the board. We're not going to have something forward or back. We're going to have boom, boom, boom. Sun look trigonal plane. What's the bond angles of trigonal plane? 120? Okay. 120, 120, 120 for a full 360. And these are hybrids. Okay? Now, I'm not going to try to make these hybrids look different from the other hybrids. But let's talk about that. Versus sp3. Are your sp2 hybrids higher in energy or lower in energy than sp3? Lower. Why are they lower? Less, less p character. This only has two p's that went into the mix. Usually you talk about s character. What's the percent S character here? 25% S. This is what? 33% S. More S character, the more it looks like an S and has the energy of an S. S is lower. So something that has more S character is going to be lower in energy. S character looks more like an S. So let's talk about length. Which one's longer, SP2 or SP3? SP3. SP3 is longer. Why? Looks more like P compared to the other. Or you can say it's got Less air, less S character. The more S character, the more rounded it gets and not as elongated, right? Okay. And what I've just explained up now is should do you for all of the considerations. Percent S character or on the flip side, percent P character. And then relative comparison compared to the max the S or P. We start talking about bond lengths. We'll want to look at what type of hybrid is being used. And, and the longer the hybrid, the longer the bond length. When we start talking about bond strength, we'll look at the energy of the hybrid used. Lower energy hybrids are going to make stronger bonds. Okay? So we got this. Uh, what type of bonds are we illustrating right here? Three sigma bonds, right? I mean, know that because sigma bonds are made using hybrids. Or the other way to say that is hybrids make sigma bonds. That's kind of just a statement. And that's what we got right here. Let's show them. It'll be head-to-head. -head. This is this is head-to-head -head overlap with what? 
Okay? It's just head to head overlap with, I'm not going to fill that in. It's the same as glycomethane. Actually, no, it's not. Let's just fill it in. This time, I'll go all the way around this time. We've got two electrons. Okay? Here I showed it as an H, but that means that's the electron from the uh, H. Okay? What's the overlap here? S is overlapping with what? SP2. SP2. Okay. Same thing down here. But what's this one head to head overlapping with? The other carbon. You know, the other carbon is the exact same thing. Um, it's trigonal planar. And you got its three hybrids. But guess what? These two hybrids are interacting head to head. Okay? That's this here. That's the third sigma bond. Now, this is all just this guy. We'd have to repeat that with the other one. Okay? Uh, so, this is a sigma bond made of overlap of what two orbitals? SP2, SP2 sigma bond. And then you got this overlapping with the H and the H. Okay, that's just like over here. Uh, what's left on the carbon that we haven't shown in this diagram? A P orbital, which is just a plain old P orbital. I'll try to draw it here. Now, if that's planar, on the board like that, the p orbital is actually so-called orthogonal or perpendicular to that plane. So if this is here, the p orbital is actually coming out. Or if we turn the plane this way, it's going up and down. You know, it's both sides. Okay. All right, Venus in the middle. All right. All right, p orbital, both sides, up and down, or further and back. I can't draw it out. I'm going to just draw it like uh, like this. The other guy's got the same thing. Um, so this is a P orbital. If you want that to be straight up and down, we'd have to turn the, the sigma framework, which is all that other, we'd have to pretend like it's like this. Basically, I'm not going to try to give a precisely accurate diagram because it's going to take a long time. We'll show pictures. Pictures in your book. The p orbitals are there, and and the carbon has one electron. Okay, All right. But the other carbon also has one electron. If we redid it, but guess what? They they team up, and so in this type of way, you can say the other carbon comes in here, and its electron. And these interact side to side, both above and below the plane. They might say, how in the world are they bonding? It looks like they're way over here. Well, that's called, I sort of drew it kind of far apart. Okay. But those are bonding side to side. I don't have a large thing here. Here's the original sigma framework. I don't know if you can see this or not. Turn the planer. We look at this guy here. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to turn it flat. Now I can show that p orbital that is on the carbon perpendicular. The other carbon's got one that's perpendicular. And those two p orbitals are sitting there. Okay. There you see it. I'm going to turn it. Okay, they're sitting there, perpendicular to the sigma framework plane. They're over interacting side to side. Okay, and again, it looks like, well, are they close enough to bond? Yes, in, in real chemical life. Side to side overlap uh, versus head to head overlap. 
And what do we call when it's side to side over here? Yeah, that's a pi bar. Okay, and the pi bond restricts rotation. See here, I can just spin this guy, sigma bond. If we had pi bond here, and it's hard to show that you can't spin it, all of this. I try to spin this carbon, okay, spin. Well, you can't spin because if you spin, you break the overlap. It has to be fully side to side, okay? And that won't let it spin. And so you can't sit here and just do this. Uh, pi bond restricts rotation. It's there. Uh, importantly, percent S character will summarize lots of this. Let's go through it. Um, there are better pictures there. Any questions? Well, I'm seeing if we missed anything. Here we go. So what do we have between the carbons? Right here. A sigma bond between carbons and a pi bond between carbons. What do you call this all together? It's your double bond. It consists of a sigma and a pi. It's never going to be two sigmas, and it's never going to be two pi. Okay. Uh, what else can we say? Three electron regions. Okay. This is uh, this is what 120. We already put that here. 120 all the way around, right? Planar. We're not having to show dashed or bold because nothing's coming off and nothing's going back. The bonds around each of these carbons are all in the plane of the board, flat on the board. Did we get everything? Let's leave the uh, ground state. Next we're going to do SP. Go ahead and put that up there. Um, what did it say? Fi. Fi. Okay. Ion ending meaning alpine. Carbon carbon triple bond. F. Fane. Anybody watch nomenclature video? F. Uh, two carbons. Okay. Compound just got two carbons. Really is not a definitive definition of what that means. Uh, and this, each one of these carbons is going to illustrate SP. The other one is the exact same. Okay, this all starts with how many regions around that carbon? Two regions, a single bond region and a triple bond region. That's two regions. Two regions are best spread out how? Linear. I brought two balloons together, tied them together, they would spread out linear. Okay. If you tie two balloons together, one's this way and one's straight up, please call us. Okay. They're going to be like this. Linear, bond angle of 180. Okay. And that's actually uh, correct bond angle, 180 degrees Celsius. 180 degrees. Um, Okay, so since we got two regions, how many hybrids do we need? Two. Yeah, for some reason I erased. We only need two hybrids, right? So we're just going to combine two. We're going to hybridize these 
And if we combine two, how many are we going to get? Two. We're going to get just two. two in the blender, blend them up, and pull out. We put an S and a P in the blender. Blend it up, and we're going to scoop out two identical orbitals, no longer what we put in. Two identical, and we're going to call these just SP, because that's what went in. Uh, what's the percent S character? Okay. Compared to the other hybrids, are these uh, shorter or longer? Even shorter because they're getting, they're becoming more and more like S, which are rounded and stubby, as opposed to the long dumbbell. Are these higher in energy or lower in energy compared to the other hybrids? Lower. Yeah, these are lower, more S character. Okay. So if we graph these all together, we would make these lower than the others. Now get that point, the percent S, what that can do for you. Understanding. We'll summarize at the end. What's left over? What, what did we not put in the blender? Two Two peas. Um, okay, let's do it this way. What type of bonds do you see that carbon make? In terms of uh, sigma or pi. What type of bond is this? Single bonds or sigma bonds? Sigma bond to H. We also got a sigma bond to carbon. Okay? And that's what we make using the hybrids. First off, here are your valence electrons of carbon. Uh, one to H and one to carbon. Okay? What we got here? Two sigma bonds. That sets your geometry. We draw all these here. Two hybrids are spread out how? Linear. Linear. Um, see that back loop? Okay, now let's draw the other hybrid uh, this way. All right. Uh, this is interacting with what? 1s and what is this? What do we have here? Sigma bond. That's a one. Uh, you can say 1s and two. What is it? What is this? Sp. SP. Those are your two sp's. Let's get rid of the one and the two. It's good to know which shell you're in, but it can become a little cumbersome. Uh, we've got an s and an sp. Right, an S and an S keep interacting head to head. So that's sigma bond. Uh, what's this carbon interacting with? There's actually another carbon over here that's the same exact hybridization. It's got two hybrids in, they're linear. And so you got SP, SP. Right here, what do we have? SP, SP, sigma bond. Yeah? Orbitals interacting, two electrons, orbitals interacting, we call that a covalent bond. Uh, we, need, we need more room here. What's left over on the carbon? Two P's. One P. is here. This is going to be a bit challenging. The other guy's got the same thing. This is all on the same plane. Nothing forward or back yet. Got one electron. And then this is the other electron. And these interact side to side. 
So you've got pi bond, you've got sigma bond. That's all flat on the board. Sigma bond to carbon, pi bond to carbon, but what else we got? We're going to have another pi bond to carbon. Because this carbon has another p orbital, but how is it oriented? It's actually now orthogonal to that p orbital. So it's coming out. Uh, and that's where it gets complicated, unless I really give it a couple of tips. Uh, well, how can we draw that here? I'm trying to write too much here. Right. Coming out, half going back, half coming towards you guys. These p orbitals are here, and they're interacting side to side this way. Um, let's see if I can do it better. It's hard to draw these guys. Uh, Good. We'll look at, uh, see these are interacting. Uh, you got to kind of think of these two being more back. Okay. I think there's a black and white in the handout. Let's look at the handout. But what, ultimately what we have here is we've got, what is this here? Triple bond, one sigma, two pi's. And of course the pi bond comes from what? One electron in P orbital. Okay. One electron in P orbital interacting side to side. But you also have one electron in P orbital, one electron in P orbital. You want to draw these up or down. So you've got two electrons interacting, two electrons in P orbitals interacting. Um, let's look in the uh, functional group handout, uh, DUS. Uh, the SP3 and the SP2. The SP2 setup looks, uh, they're trying to show the plane with that shaded plane. And really, if you look at the P orbitals, if you consider them straight up or straight down, that shaded plane is meant to be sort of like this. Um, you turn all those, those hybrids like this, and the P orbitals can be up or down, and they can interact side to side. And between the carbons, you have the head to head sigma bond, and then you have your pi bond. You gotta remember the electrons that are there, what type, what type of orbitals the electrons in. Um, look at the SP, let's see if it seems reasonable. Up top, the sigma bond in between. Uh, the pi bond that's labeled at the very top, straight up. But then the other pi bond would be coming Horizontal. See if you can make sense of those drawings and ask, ask questions. Let's uh, do some examples and also let's look at the back, very back page of that where we look at bond lengths, bond strengths, etc. Um, any questions though?
course, if you have two pi bonds, you ain't rotating those atoms, right? So let's look at bond lengths, bond strengths, D. That was my attempt to show the uh, sort of the relative comparison of the hybrids. Should an SP be shorter and more rounded? So it's more S character. SP3 is going to be longer because it's more P character. Okay. I'm just trying to look at those. That's the main thing. We went through that already. Length and stability. Lower energy orbitals are going to make stronger bonds. So let's look at this table here. Summary, please be looking at this. Okay? Uh, make sure you read the heading, what it's trying to tell you we're looking at. Length of the carbon carbon bond. Okay? Looks like this is a smaller one, smaller length. Does that make sense to you? Please understand and rationalize why. Strength of the carbon carbon bond. See, this is uh, a little bit misleading. They're calling bond a, a, a triple a bond. Of course, a triple is going to be stronger than a double. Um, but is a triple three times a uh, sigma or a single? Is it 270? Why is it not 270? You able to understand that there, yeah? Um, length of the CH bond. Well, what type of orbitals are being used? Why is this one shorter? Okay, it's not that much shorter. But the trend should you should be able to predict the trend. Okay. Strength of the CH bond. Length and strength. They all, it's all based on what type of orbitals are being used. And if you're using hybrids, what's the percent S character? Um, and you can do questions like this at the bottom. Bring bonds longest to shortest. Please do that. Uh, in the syllabus, there's a number of drugs. Okay. We need to move on to heteroatoms like oxygen. Okay. Please consider or note, answer, what's the hybridization of every atom in these top three drugs? Now the H is not hybridized, it's just the S orbital. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, halogen, etc. is going to be hybridized. Okay. Over here, one of these nitrogens will be a, a exception. I'll have to learn about an exception. The main thing is, start with what? Number of regions around the atom. If there's three regions around the atom, what's going to be the hybridization? These are the questions to ask. Okay? Here's the other question. You'll see it in some of the workbook. How many P, how many pi electrons? Okay? Number of pi electrons. By electron will be an electron that's in a P orbital. Got to know where electrons are. So open them. How many electrons in P orbitals? Okay, guys. Uh, have a good day.